Okay, comes time to break down the IPv6 address. How do we even begin to break down an address that's 128 bits long? Well, we take it into sections. IPv6 address, each section is separated by a colon instead of a decimal. Where in IPv4 you had four octets, each octet represented eight bits, right? And they're separated by a decimal. With IPv6, you have sections. Each section is separated by a colon. And each section is 16 bits. Now, why is it 16 bits? Because each hexadecimal number, the 2, the 0, and I'm not using my right arm, remember, I have an injury in my right arm. The 2, the 0, the 0, the 1, all right? Each one of those is a hexadecimal number that's 4 bits long. Therefore, 4 times 4 is 16. So if you have right here, and I'm sorry to get my back to you, uh, right here, is that right there? Yeah, up to right there, those, these first four sections is considered the network portion of the address, right? That's 64 bits long. Because again, 16, 16, and 16, and 16. That's 64 bits. So there's your 64 bit portion of the address. And this section over here, it's also the same 64 bits, but it is called the interface ID, or you can think of it as the host portion of the address, but it's called the interface ID. With IPv6, really the interface ID, we don't need to worry too much about, because remember I spoke before, they have over 15 quintillion or 18 quintillion something 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 or other uh, addresses so it's really a lot of addresses that you don't need to be worried about especially when we have features that can automatically assign that for us but since you can use all those numbers you can really put whatever you want you know you can try and make it make sense but you can put whatever you want so it's broken down into two parts now this right here is kind of hard even for myself to get used to saying because I'm always saying CIDR, 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 or subnet. It's not a CIDR. It's not a subnet mask. It is called the network prefix. It is specifically used in routing purposes only. The reason I put 64 here is because in your book it tells you if you really don't know what to put, you can put just the default 64 and the rest will take care of itself. Okay? Do the features that I see. Uh, IP version 6 brings to us. Okay, as you can see here, I don't do that. Here I put 56 because when I do my labs, I have my students subnet, as you will be submitting in IPv6 as well. All right, uh, which is, I use the same practice I do for IPv4 for the basics uh, subnetting in IPv6. But that this is your address right here. Right here, this whole 128 bit address is your IPv6 address. Now, it's long, it's long. So they've come up with ways where we can shorten the address. Now, I put some zeros there, not enough probably, but I did put some zeros in there because one of the rules with IPv6 and expressing an IPv6 address, which are the things that you're gonna be testing on because they want you to come up uh, to look at an IPv6 address and say, hey, that's a valid IPv6 address. Well, in order to do that, one of the rules is you can take out the leading zeros. Any zero in the front of the address, you can remove it. Okay? So you can make it look like this. All right? So that can shorten the address. And let's just say, for example, that this section right here was all zeros, right? We can even have a double colon, but you can only have one double colon in your address. You cannot have two double colons. If, for example, this one here, this last portion here, it was all zeros, and we did this, that would be an invalid address. You would actually have to put a zero in there. Because if you do not, then it won't know. It won't know where to put the zero. It's like, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know where to put the zero. So it gets confused. So it has those rules. So we can take out leading zeros to make the address shorter. And we can use, if you have a consecutive set of zeros, you can truncate it by using a double colon. We should know that when we take a look and 
I'll give you a sneak peek, or not really a sneak peek. It's a, one of the type of addresses, I guess. Uh, looking for the enter, enter key. Okay. Uh, double colon, right? The loopback, double colon one. We do it already, because that is the loopback address in IPv6, the loopback address in IPv6, because there is only one loopback address in IPv6, and that is it, unlike IPv4. So what that means, there's a whole bunch of zeros in between there. And then one, right? So they've made it simpler for us to not to be like so painful and actually write out these long addresses. So when you take your test, which is the goal of this course is to prepare you to take the CCNA certification, you need to be able to pick out a valid IPv6 address. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that in hexadecimal value, they don't go beyond F. So if, if you see something that says G, that is not a valid IPv6 address because you cannot go beyond F. And they'll throw things out there, out there like that for you, okay, or to you. Now they'll put XYZ or they'll put like ridiculous numbers. Not enough sections. Remember, it's eight sections, four and four, each, sec each section being 16 bits. So be very careful when doing that. If you don't have enough sections, it's because like here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. But we have a double colon. What does that mean? That means in that double colon right there, one, two, three, four, we have a set of four zeros. So that will complete the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll be looking out for that. Because just by looking at the uh, Maybe the font size is not big enough. I know for me, it's never big enough. But when I look at it, you look at the address, you kind of skip over maybe the double colon or you just, oh my God, I only see five sections because the, the colons are too small. Be very careful when you're picking that out. All right, so look for things that don't go over F. Look for double colons because they're not valid. Anything over F is not valid. You only can take out the leading zeros, the leading zeros. And remember, this right here is called the network prefix. It is used for routing only. What do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and remove the interface ID portion of the address. So it won't be that horrible to look at. And we'll just put another colon here. All right. And that was just like you see up there. We have, um, let me get rid of the loopback address over here. Okay you're looking at the network portion of the address, but each section has its purpose. Within the first section, this is the registry, the ARIN, the people who, the internet that assigns us uh, the, wow, okay. Really? This portion of the address <laughs> doesn't want to do the finger. Uh, the American Registry. This tells us, hey, this is a globally unique address, and that's what that is. It's a globally unique address. The next section, all right, now I did it. The next section is your particular ISP. So they got their address from the registry, and then this portion right here, the CAD, right, could be bad, it could be face, like in Facebook, all right, that is your company. That will represent your company. So your company is using a particular ISP that's using whatever registry. Okay? And then the last portion of the address, this fourth section right there, that is for you to subnet. Ah, yes. The wonderful word of subnetting. All right? So, yes, you will be subnetting in IPv6. Just because you have quintillion and 18 quintillion and all sorts of quintillion addresses, you still will subnet because it's about networking and building a hierarchy of those quintillion addresses within your network. So you will be submitting and that is what this number is for. And just to break it down even further so you can understand what I did up here, this last portion, and again, give you a sneak peek into the submitting portion of it, okay? Uh, remember, each one of these bits or bytes is four bits long. So you have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. Oh, let me make another space here. There we go. So really, this portion right here is means, now here we go again. It means this right here. Each one of those numbers is four bits long. So where does that 56 come in? How did you get that 56? Well, you have 16 and 16, that's 32. And 16 more, that's 48. Then we have 49, 50, 51, 50, what am I, what, what, 48, 49. Okay, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna use the mouse because my finger's not working. I'll bring it over here so you guys can see. All right, and then I'll look at the laptop so I know what I'm doing. So we have uh, 16, 32, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. So that imaginary line that we always talk about is right there. And when we get to submitting, you'll see. So that's how I come up in my lab and I get a 56. So we actually take an actual network and we were given a network prefix of whatever, and then we look for the amount of subnets that we require, and then we put the appropriate network prefix for our particular networks. All right, so that's what, how we do it when we are subnetting in IPv6, but that's what that portion is for. So it's not that difficult. It's just, again, like I said previously, it's getting used to looking at it and understanding that you're not working with decimal numbers anymore you're working with hexadecimal numbers, and each hexadecimal number is four bits long. And then the bit values of those hex numbers are now, you know, they're one, two, four, eight, that's it. And they don't go higher than F, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then we start again. So it's, again, it takes kind of getting used to looking at that type of address but once you do, and you start looking at it, and you start seeing how it's broken down, which is really what you need to focus on when you take your test, is how they break down, or when you're trying to find a valid IP address, you gotta make sure the rules that we talked about, no double colons, no letters above F, make sure that it equals out to eight sections if they've truncated something, okay? So be on the lookout for something like that you should have no worries, no worries. So there you go. That's what an IPv6 address looks like. That's the breakdown of it. Now you've seen it, not that difficult. Just learn it and work with it and you'll be all right. I'll see you in the next section.